Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, very good to be here again after one year. Uh, and I'm, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to kind of set the scene, set the stage for, uh, for an amazing lineup of speakers uh, coming right behind me. So what's the state of startups and VC in Italy? When I was here last year, uh, I shared this slide. So Italy is where Spain was three, four years ago, France seven, eight years ago. Uh, and this got shared a lot. Um, it got, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, discussions started around it. Uh, and um, one guy shared this on, uh, on LinkedIn the other day, which I thought was really cool. So he was saying, okay, so this is where France was seven years ago, eight years ago. Seven years ago, uh, that's when today's unicorns were born in, uh, in France. So where are those unicorns that are, that are being born today in Italy now? And how can we make sure that we create an environment that they can thrive? So first, before answering that, what are the numbers looking like? So VC funding, you can see on the left-hand side, uh, is already at 1.7 billion this year, uh, and it's projected to grow about 64%, uh, while Europe is slowing down. So Europe is uh, doing much worse. Italy is actually uh, yeah, super hot at the moment in terms of VC investment growth. Q3 specifically, which hasn't officially ended yet, but it's like ending, I think, today or tomorrow. Uh, but it's already been the most active quarter ever for venture capital funding, with 831 million invested into Italian startups. So as you can see, a record by far. And as a result of that, the combined enterprise value of Italian tech companies is now 33 billion. So it's becoming a, a major sector in, in, in Italy. But Italy is a very large country. It's one of the largest countries in Europe. So it's, it's not enough. If you look per capita, uh, it's very low, the, the VC investment activity compared to other countries. So you can see uh, ranked about 24th with countries like Estonia, Iceland, Switzerland at the top. Uh, so it, you know, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Also by number of unicorns, uh, so four new unicorns this year, including Scalape, obviously. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of movement going on, but in total, you're looking at six unicorns now in Italy compared with the UK, for example, 130, Germany, 62. So still, still uh, some catching up to do. The sect, in terms of kind of sectors where Italy really excels, obviously fintech is where there are a lot of startups uh, that have been very successful. Uh, I think everybody knows that, but I thought it's interesting to see what's behind it and like health and biotech, food, that's where uh, it, the Italian tech ecosystem really stands out so far. Um, so the, and the, the, the VC investment data I shared earlier is also impacted by these kind of mega rounds, big rounds. I think it's also interesting to look at more kind of the early stage. So um, here you can see uh, if we exclude these, these kind of later stage rounds, what you can see is that in VC investment activity in Italy is, is pretty much holding up quite well. Uh, it's quite active on, on a historical basis, which is good because um, venture capital overall is, is starting to slow down. Um, and also at the early stage, so when you take out these big rounds that always skew the numbers, you, what you can see is health and biotech, fintech, those are kind of the areas where, where Italy excels, but also in food tech. And yeah, education, so ed tech maybe doesn't really show up in the numbers, but I know that there is a ton of super exciting ed tech companies also being created. There's a real ed tech ecosystem flourishing out of Italy. Um, so at the early stages, there's a lot of super interesting activity going on. And I think also this has gotten noticed slowly by international investors. So here you can see wh uh, where is the money coming from that's going into Italian startups. So a few years ago, it was completely dominated by Italian money. And now you can see like, uh, the, 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 the percentage of Italian money is actually now in the minorities below 50%. 
the rest is coming from either the rest of Europe and the US, which is uh, what, you, what you kind of want to see. You want to see more international investment happening. Um, and the reason why is that there is not, in, not enough investors in Italy. So you can see there's uh, just over 200 VCs that are actively investing in Italy. That's three times less than in France and in Germany, for example. And you can see that both the kind of on the like VC fund level and on the corporate investment fund, uh, corporate venture fund level, there's just far fewer investors that are active here. So Italy really needs more investor, investors to, to be able to compete. <coughs> Uh, but it just it doesn't need just investors. It needs good investors um, And a good and a bad investor. What's the difference? Well, I think a, uh, a good investor is one that uh, really ha Doesn't focus for example on economic interest right from the start But looks at the long term and wants the startup to succeed on a on a very big level uh, and this and a good investor is also able to help a startup reach to the next stage, to the Series A stage. So, for example, if you have a good investor, in, which includes uh, Kima Ventures, which is just speaking right after me, um, then, uh, then you're a top quartile VC, and, and the chance that the startup reaches the next stage is 40%, whereas if you're a bottom quartile investor, it's only 7%. So, for a startup, it's like a matter of life and death. Uh, and so you want to start to create uh, yeah, a group of investors that can really make a difference, uh, that have had experience with, with scaling startups successfully. Uh, and there again, there are not enough of those kinds of investors in Italy yet. Uh, also from outside of Europe. So uh, if you really look at kind of the top 20 VCs in Europe, um, very few of them do deals in Italy so far, uh, and it hasn't really grown. So it's like between one and two deals, and that needs to go way up. Um, so yeah, coming kind of to the, to the end of my talk, um, so how, how should Italy move forward? I cannot pretend to know the answer to that, and I think after me there's going to be a good discussion about this exact topic, but I can kind of give my, my two cents. So you have, on the one hand, the, the kind of US model, and on the other hand, the French model, which I think uh, the next speaker is, is going to be able to, to really talk about, because he has been really at the, at the, at the, you know, at the beginning of, the, of, of what has happened in France. So you have, on the one hand, the US model, where there's just, it kind of grew organically. And yes, there has been a lot of uh, government involvement in the very early stages, but it's been basically kind of a self-fulfilling business model in, in the US. France was like way behind. If you look 10 years ago, there was almost no startup scene and they managed to completely turn it around thanks to the government really stepping in and funding uh, the right VCs. But I think there was also a, a big kind of cultural shift that happened in France. Um, and I think, yeah, like the other day, I heard someone say something which I think is really interesting. The reason that that uh, uh, the, the kind of startup scene started in California and in, in, in Silicon Valley, the reason it started there is because people there, um, you know, there was no Wall Street, there, there was actually a lack of things, and therefore also total disregard for structure and for hierarchy and I think that kind of typifies the culture that, that has succeeded in Silicon Valley. It's like people don't really care about too much about tradition. You need to be, yeah, a little bit, um, you know, going against the, 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 the structure. You need to have not too much respect for what's there. So there's like one um, really nice saying, which is, if you see the Buddha on the road, you have to kill him. And what that means is, so if you get inspired even from someone, even if you meet someone that, that uh, really is like your mentor, let's say, at some point you need to step over that person 
to, to reach your, your target. And I think that's, like, that's not the mindset that we have in Europe, but that you need to get uh, in order to, to really change the, the ecosystem. Um, but yeah, Italy is now choosing the, the French playbook. I think the French playbook can only succeed if there's also that, that cultural shift um, and, and, and not be too, too traditionalist. Um, but also there is probably even more money needed if you compare Germany, France, the amount of money they are putting into deep tech and startups. Uh, Italy is still way behind different types of numbers, so hopefully that will increase over the coming years. Um, yeah, and then we can see where are those startups that are going to be unicorns in the next seven years. Um, I think one nice place to look is on the deal room platform, uh, so I invite you to, to create a free account. Scala Pay was already predicted just a few weeks ago to become the next unicorn, but there are many other companies, so I would uh, invite you to check it out. Thank you very much.